Hello, this is Ellen Manya from Why Wow Mom. Do you have just a minute to take five or six or seven or eight and pause in this busy day and see what the Lord has to say from his word for this time to take five? I always like this time of day because I pause with you. I really don't have a script. I pray and ask the Lord what to say in my prayer time and I come on. And I open my mouth and I always listen. Some people think, why are you listening to your own material? Well, I learn from it because I don't know what I'm going to say. And I just trust the Lord. He says in the scripture, he will open your mouth, open your mouth and he will fill it if you're walking with him. Now, I'm not saying if you're not walking with him because I don't know what would come out of your mouth then. But Ron Fernio, a dear pastor friend of mine, used to say to me in the early days, maybe 15 years ago, that you, you write under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, but you have to learn to speak. And it was really kind of scary at first. I always had my notes there, and I'd look at them, and now I, I get on my podcast, Wow Mom, with other people to interview, and I give them notes. I go, these are the show notes, and then I say, we rarely look at them. Because the truth is, we want the Holy Spirit to take over. So today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You may listen to Wow Mom, take five podcasts, and one day you get something out of it, and the next day you don't. No, that's it. It wasn't for you. It was for someone else. You have to trust the Lord that when you listen, you'll have one little nugget to take home, a little souvenir. So today, I'm going to talk about the scripture we love because he first loved us. I think that's a great scripture. My husband used to say all the time is, let's pray that we would love one another and we'd love God more so that we can love one another more. And I used to go, but we get grace in the sacrament of marriage to love one another every day of our life. It just flows from our soul. And he said, no, we have to get close to the Lord, and then he has us the grace. I thought that was brilliant, and it is true. I found it to be true. But sometimes what happens in your life with Christ, if you go to prayer time and you feel empty, you feel like the jug with no water, you feel like the, the man only had seven sandwiches, how does God multiply that love in your heart to give out to others? Because you really can't give out of an empty heart. Well, it's a key to be with him is receiving his love. Some people receive his love differently than others. I happen to like my quiet time with Jesus, like a contemplative time and adoration. I like the mass. There's so many things I like. Well, I was gonna be a nun. <laughs> so I'm drawn towards that quiet and that t personal time. But other times when you don't seem to feel, hear, see, or know God's there, it's good to get around people of faith, people that will fill you. That's why Jesus gathered his disciples and taught them they stir the faith in one another. That's what you do on the podcast. We try to stir the faith in your heart that's already there, sometimes laying dormant. You know, there's a lot of scriptures right now coming alive. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm a scripture scholar, because I'm not, but I've been in the Word since 1970s, and I love the Word of God because it's like a safety net. Did you ever do a trampoline, and, and you got you have those the safety net in case you fall off? There's something to catch you. Or even a tightrope walker. Do, 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 do. And then you fall, but you know there's a net underneath. So that's how it is with the Word of God. You could always go to it and say, hmm, what popped out at me today? Well, right now there's wars and rumors of wars. But we are not to be afraid as, as Christians, because if you're walking with the Lord today, you'll be walking with the Lord tomorrow, and you'll be walking with the Lord the day after that. We're to be fervent in prayer. One time I asked the Lord, what should we do? with all that's going on in America. What you do for America? He said, pray the rosary. The rosary was what made the walls come down. Well, God made the walls come down, but the rosary was used by people of faith to pray every day that the walls would come down in Russia. We gotta be doing that again. As Catholic brothers and sisters, we know the power of trusting our hearts to him. That's what I like about rope prayer. When you feel empty, when you feel like there's half a sleeve on, <laughs> it's my half a sleeve, then you could, you could go to the Word and you could go to the rope prayers, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, St. Michael the Archangel. In the early days, I would go, I rebuke you, stay in the name of Jesus. Well, then I read that scripture where they go, Paul, I know, but who are you? And I just go, St. Michael, this is one for you. And it goes like this, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince, the heavenly host, by the power of God, see the power of God, thrust Satan in hell, and all the evil spirits who are about the world seeking the ruin of souls. You know, don't fear that Russia is going to take over, there'll be war. Don't fear that, that someone is going to, you know, do something wrong to you. Fear that your soul isn't right with God. 
this is a time to get your soul right with God. I said the other day, there's a new springtime summit coming. I should get my sign out because I found it one day after God said, there's a new springtime coming for those who are seeking his face. Are you seeking his face? Are you in his word? Are you in, frequently in the sacraments? Are you studying the faith? I highly recommend RCIA. Even if you have always been a Catholic all your life, I learn something every time when my husband teaches RCA. He's a deacon in the Catholic Church, and there's something to learn. You never, never learn it all. There's always more of Jesus to know. So my, my lesson for today, because I've been giving lessons each day, my lesson for today is read a little bit of Revelation. See about the when they leash the horses. You know, God can only take so much of sin. The wages of sin is death and the gift of God eternal life. Those who are not following after the gift of eternal life and living in thanksgiving and praise to him are reaping upon our country all kinds of sin and death. We know that. I don't have to tell you. Just read the newspaper and listen to the news. So we have to be, be fervent in prayer. What we want to do is he wants to find us prayerful. And we know without a doubt that he's bigger than anything that is thrown at us. But it says um, it rains on the believer and the non-believer. Sometimes we suffer the consequences for someone else's sin. We have to beg the Lord. Ten good men praying for our country. Remember, ten good men just pray for our country. And um, I, I know this. When I was in ten car crashes in one and a half years, every time it wasn't my fault. And every time the person was sorry. <laughs> and I was sorry too because I suffered the consequences of their sin. I hurt in my body even to this day 12 years later. And they were sorry and I prayed with them. And no one, it's even miraculously, no one got a ticket on any of them, even though there was error in a lot of them. I said, no, I don't want to give them a ticket. It's enough they have to fix their car. And so did I. So the wages of sin is death, the gift of God, eternal life. But I suffered the consequences of someone else's sin in my body, in my mind, in my soul. But you know, forgiveness goes a long way. And ask the Lord what to do once you enter into a pit like Joseph ended up in the pit. It wasn't his fault. His brother saw that idea. They have the jail. It wasn't his fault. That lady thought that idea. You know that he that told her said Joseph raped me when he hadn't done that. There's a lot of examples in the Bible when we have suffering that is unjust or uncalled for. But God, in His wisdom, He always works it out for the good. You don't have to worry about that. Once you say, Lord, I surrender this to you. This was not my choice, not my doing. And I, I have enough sin in my life that I know that I want people to forgive me as well. I forgive all in question. And I walk in the grace of the Lord. He will always see you the other end. With every trial, there's a way out. What was, what was Joseph's way out? Well, Joseph had the gift of dreams. His brothers thought, he said, what Satan has meant for evil, and my brothers too, I have meant for good, the Lord said to him. What Satan has meant for evil, I have meant for good. During through a trial, a hard trial, when you feel empty and you feel like you have you have given all and all has been taken away for unjust reasons, you go like this. Lord, I know you're gonna work it out for the good, and he does. And you gotta that's why you got a journal. I said the other day on the air. Journal please, because the journal will show you where you've been, where you're going, and what's next, you know? We can always have hope. Hope makes your faith float. So no matter what happens in our world on the outside do encourage you listening to what's going on because there's times that we have to some do some things first of all pray pray for what's going on in our world pray for our president and our country pray for those who are in sin and have no idea that their wages of sin is death and the gift of god eternal life they don't have to know the word of god to suffer the consequence of their sin it's built into our world just like gravity you throw something up and it comes down <laughs> And then it breaks if you don't watch out. So it's really important to read the Word of God each day, frequent the sacraments, look for Jesus, and be grateful because there's a lot to be grateful about. We, you know, it's always that thing that goes like this. Um, I didn't think things could get worse, and then they got worse. So be thankful what you got right now. I'm so thankful for what I got because things can get worse, and they have. And in my life, I've gone through a ton of trials. And you can Pat and I were in the ministry, so that is built in that. And we have eight children, so what you know, there you go. So life is unpredictable. The only thing predictable and steady and firm is Jesus. So I'm gonna say what's that what's my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. I just went through a trial of health, the big C word. It was very hard. But before I went through it, one sister said she was praying, and another thing that God said to me is 
clung to the cross. What does that mean? Well, Jesus clung to the cross, even though it wasn't his idea to suffer and be, be suffer for our sins. He was willing to do what the Father wanted, and that's what we have to be as well. And also, cling to the cross. You can offer it up for those who are suffering, for those who are misled, for those who are not converted. Offering it up gives you a way to, to think, to think now to know that God's going to use this for some kind of other thing. And you don't have to know what it is to get to heaven. So, if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If your cup is empty, fill it with the grace of the sacraments, the word of God, other people, or fill it with your own personal prayer time. Because in order for God to make you holy, he's got to make you whole. Or if you give love out to other people, he's got to fill you with his love. Human love is just full of pride and arrogance and jealousy and all kinds of reasons that you do things. But when you're walking in God's love, you're pure of heart and you walk towards the prize. Who's the prize? Eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for listening and I hope you have a good day.